judgment in the appeal of PJS and the Newsgroup Newspapers Limited. Lord Mance will explain the judgment of the court. The claimant, PJS, is married to YMNA. Both are well-known figures, and they have young children. Between 2009 and 2011, PJS had sexual encounters with AB, including one three-way encounter, which involved AB's partner, CD. In January 2016, AB and CD agreed to sell the story to The Sun on Sunday, owned by news group newspapers, NGN. NGN informed PJS that it would publish the story. PJS issued proceedings to stop publication and applied for an injunction until trial. This was granted by the Court of Appeal on the 22nd of January 2016 and was effective in England and Wales. However, in early April 2016, AB got the story published in a United States magazine. PJS's solicitors took steps to ensure that the publication was geo-blocked online so as to restrict it to the United States. The story was reproduced in one other US publication and in articles in Canada and a Scottish newspaper. Details or links also started to appear on the internet and social media in England. PGS's solicitors have been taking steps, they say with some success, to remove offending URLs and web pages. But it seems likely that for those knowing where and how to look, the story is accessible on the internet from England and Wales. NGN accordingly applied to discharge the injunction, and on the 18th of April, the Court of Appeal agreed to do this. On the 21st of April, the Supreme Court temporarily restored the injunction pending the present judgment. Now, by a majority of four to one, it allows the appeal and continues the injunction until trial. Lord Mance gives the main judgment with which Lord Newberger, Lady Hale, and Lord Reed agree. Lord Newberger and Lady Hale also give separate concurring judgments while Lord Toulson dissents. In summary, these are the reasons for allowing the appeal. Section 12, subsection 3 of the Human Rights Act 1998 states that a court should not grant such an injunction unless it is satisfied that the claimant is likely to establish that publication should not be allowed at trial. Under the established case law, the court has to balance the rights of freedom of expression on which NGN relies against the rights of privacy of PJS, his partner, and their two children, on which PJS relies. These two rights start with equal weight in principle, and the Court of Appeal went wrong in saying that they did not. Further, under Section 12, Subsection 4 of the 1998 Act, the Court has to take into account these additional factors the extent to which the story has or will become available to the public, the public interest in the story being published, and any relevant privacy code. Taking first privacy rights, publication of the story would infringe privacy rights of PGS, his partner, and their two children. Taking second freedom of expression, there is no public interest however much it may be of interest to members of the public, in publishing kiss-and-tell stories or criticisms of private sexual conduct simply because the persons involved are well known, and so there is no right to invade privacy by publishing them. It is different if the story has some bearing <clears throat> on the performance of a public office or the correction of a misleading public impression cultivated by the person involved. But, as the Court of Appeal decided, that does not apply here. Taking third, section 12, subsections 4's reference to a privacy code, this is relevant to the children, since NGN subscribes to the Independent Press Standards Code, which confirms that editors must demonstrate an exceptional public interest to override the normally paramount interests of children. Fourthly, as to public availability, it is true that the story has been accessible on the internet and social media, but if the injunction were to be lifted, there would be intensive coverage of the story by The Sun on su Sunday, 
and there is little doubt by other newspapers, as well as unrestricted internet and social media coverage, all of which would constitute additional and potentially more enduring invasions of the privacy of PJS, his partner, and their children. Turning to other factors, if publication were permitted now, it would be likely to deprive a trial of any real purpose, since all privacy would by then have been destroyed. Damages after the event, whatever their measure, would be unlikely to give any real consolation or address to any of those involved. Bearing in mind all these circumstances, the court has come to the conclusion that the injunction should continue pending trial on the basis that first, the absence on present evidence of any genuine public interest justifying publication means that a permanent injunction would be likely to be granted at trial. And second, an interim injunction is appropriate to protect PJS, his partner, and their two young children against further invasions of privacy pending a full trial, which should not be rendered substantially irrelevant by further unrestricted disclosures of relatively old sexual history. The appeal will accordingly be allowed and the injunction restored and continued until trial or further order. Court is now adjourned. <laughs>